will be happy. Yes. Yeah. Trace seven have you already? So. <laughs> the holders then, it looks like company could use it as his comeback game. What do you think of the way they started? Without perhaps the best defender company and how hungry are you to emulate what he did in the competition what uh, a few years ago? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you talk about Man City. They've obviously had a, a great start to the season. Um, company to come back in, but I think whatever changes they make tomorrow night, we're talking about a, a top quality squad with world class players all over. So it'd be a very strong team. But like you say, you mentioned there, the the League Cup holds great memories for ourselves. Um, three years ago, uh, winning at Wembley and going into the Europa League, it's fantastic memory. So the Liberty Stadium will be. Uh, I hope full tomorrow night it'll be a great atmosphere um, and we've got to use that against a team obviously full of confidence. Borja Vasto unlikely to make his first start we saw him for a few minutes there at the weekend. What can we expect from him? How different is he character and style from the centre forwards you've seen come and go here over the years? Well it's, it's been a difficult period for, for Borja. Obviously he's come in, he's been injured. Um, but he's been training the last two weeks. He's looked he's looked very strong. Um, of course, when a new player comes from a, a different league, it, it, sometimes it it can take time to adapt. But obviously, we hope that he hits the ground running. But his his finishing's been very good in training. You can see why he, he scored the amount of goals he did last season in the Liga. Um, and you know he's been made to feel welcome. And he, he's going to add something different to the squad. Obviously, Fernando Llorente's come in, and uh, you know he's a target man. He holds the ball up very well for ourselves. But Obviously, Baston's a bit more mobile, a bit more running in behind. And, and like I say, he's looked sharp in training. His finishing's been very good. So, as a team, we need to make sure we give them opportunities to, to show his finishing skills. Against Southampton and the matches so far, which aspects of, of the team play and, and the individuals do you feel that are just dipping below what you're capable of here? No, you're right. I think... Um, I mean, if you talk about Sunday against Southampton, we have to be honest and say the level was was well below what we we should be performing at. Um, I think as a team, as in individuals, um, the Chelsea game. I think the second half we showed great character, great spirit to to come back and, and get a point in that game. But I think, like I say, that the, the performance level on Sunday was disappointing. Um, I think if you play that way against any team in the Premier League. Uh, or in, in, in cup competitions, you'll struggle. So, where do you feel the biggest improvement should be on the ball, off the ball shape? Well, I think I think a bit of both. You, you, you know, there wasn't many positives to take out of Sunday in terms of on the ball and off the ball. So, I think there's room for improvement all over the pitch. I think on the ball, we have to make sure that we're a team who always like to dominate possession and, and use the ball well. I think obviously off the ball, we're a team we like to press as well. So, I think we need to get back to. Back to them, which has served us so well over the years, and on Sunday we, we didn't do uh, well at all. The coach has publicly said that Neil Taylor will, will play this game, having been left out at the weekend. Have you, as the senior man here and the captain, said to Taylor and Key, look, as much as we want to disagree with uh, coming off, he's the boss, he wants to take us off, you just got to uh, try and button it, mate. Have you had a word in the ear? No, obviously the players speak um, in the changing room and uh, on the training ground. And I think, listen, I think obviously everyone's frustrated. I think on Sunday everyone was frustrated with the way we played. And I think Key would be disappointed. I think we're professional. I think we have to respect the manager, respect um, the group of players that we've got. You know, if there's a problem, like always in football, you deal with it in the change room if you, if you have an issue with anything. So I think, you know, as much as there's frustration and emotion running high when... When you're not performing well and maybe you get brought off, I think at the same time we have to remember that we are professionals um, and we have to respect everyone involved in the football club. And they know that. Um, you know, I hope that's, that's the last we see of that. And is it something that they just deal with individually with the coach or do they say to the lads, sorry, overreacted? Well, it depends on the individual, really. I think, um, you know, obviously... It's down to the manager um, to deal with it internally when he feels there might be an issue there. But as players, I think you know we know we have to respect the whole group. And you, listen, it's an emotional game. Um, we've seen it over the years when players react um, when they come off and they feel maybe they shouldn't come off or they're disappointed. But I think when things calm down, they realise it's probably the wrong thing to do. Um, and, and then boys would, would know that. How much is the Sticky start down to maybe another just 
gentle changing of the guard here as well, when obviously Williams had gone and Scott Sinclair had gone the previous summer, and that Rogers core with you and, and Neil Taylor not starting because Kingsley's in, and uh, maybe Scott Sinclair, uh, uh, Wayne Routledge and, uh, and obviously Nathan Dyer not starting as regular as they would have in previous seasons. Fans got to understand that as young players get integrated and new players. Well, yeah, I think um, you mentioned the players there. We've we've been lucky at Swansea over the years. We've had a core of players who've stayed together, who've known the system and, and known the football club inside out, really. But look, there's always going to be changes this summer. We, we've lost, obviously, a couple of big players. So it was a bit of a transition, a new manager to, as such to work with in the summer. Um, so there's obviously got to be a bit of a, a bedding in period, but it's in the Premier League's ruthless. You can't, uh, you can't waste too much time. We see that last year, I think, under Gary, we won... Maybe one in twelve games, and all of a sudden you find yourself uh, right down in the in the bottom. So, as much as there's a, a bedding in period and, and players coming in into the team, you have to you have to perform. You can't. There's no time to waste, really. So, you have to understand that. Yeah, there's there's an adjustment there. But as players, we have to raise our level individually and as a team. How do you see this sticky start compared to, to last year? Then, what can you learn from that that will get you out of this? Well, I think last year we had that sticky period, which obviously, unfortunately, ended up with Gary uh, losing his job. And I think after that, we just said, look, let's just go back to basics, do the things that have always served us well, you know, work hard, pass the ball, just do the things, like I say, that have, have done well for us. And we've got to learn from the mistakes last year. Like I say, we went through a period of, of winning 1 in 12, 13 games. All right, we're only five games into the season. We're not um, too far into the season, but... Like I say, it's, it's such a tough league. You don't want to make sure that we're 10, 15 games in and one, two or three games and we're in the bottom three because it's difficult. The pressure mounts. Um, you know, Obviously, the crowd get edgy, the media spotlights on you and you don't enjoy your football. I can tell you last year, you know, a lot of games you didn't enjoy. So we need to nip it in the bud now and make sure that you know we rectify our mistakes. Anyone from me specifically, and Ashley Williams, no one knows what he brought to this club more than you. Just how much are you missing him? And not just on the pitch, as, as the leader, when things aren't going wrong, when there's been results going against you, perhaps a little uh, incidents of players' frustration about substitutions, what he can bring to that? Well, obviously, Ash was, was the captain here. He's, um, like you say, you talk about on the pitch, he was he was ever-present, he was consistent, he was he was fantastic for the football club. So, yeah, when, when you lose a player like that, um, yeah, it's, a, it's a, a big loss in terms of the character that he is, like you say, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch. But... Like I say before, we mentioned about players coming and going. It's it's happened at this football club for years, so we just we just got to get on with it. You know, other players have to step up. That's what it's about. You know, people wait in the wings as such to to get the opportunity, um, and now it's about you know people standing up and being men. And you know, it's an opportunity for other players to show what they're about. Do you think the kids that are in the team can be men? Well, yeah. I mean, listen, they they to be honest with you, they haven't got much much option when you're in the Premier League. It's you can't be carrying kids along, you know, once you're playing in the first team, you, you have to be a man and um, whether you're, you're 18 or 19, you have to stand up and be counted. And I'm sure I've got confidence in the boys, we've got a good group here and the young lads have shown that they, they're capable of doing it. Leon, you mentioned that, that terms of going back to basics. Does that include, in your opinion, a, a change in formation back to what many people consider the old Swansea way, you know, the, the wingers, um, sitting midfielders, more of attacking rather than defensive approach rather? Yeah, I don't think we've been... It depends which way you look at the formations we play. You, you can deter them attacking or defensively. But I think, obviously, the last two games we've changed uh, the formation twice. So, obviously, maybe that doesn't help in terms of the rhythm the rhythm of the, the performance as such. But, like Swansea, we all know, we, you know, through the years, I think the system with, like you mentioned there, two wingers and 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3, whatever you want to call it, I think is... It's a system that all the players know inside out, really, and, and everyone knows their job with and without the ball. So, obviously, it's down to the manager to decide um, what formation to play, who to pick. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's looking at different things at the moment. You can't, you can't criticise him for that. I think maybe over the years we've been looked upon as only having one way of playing or one system. So, it's good that he's trying things, but obviously, when you're trying things and maybe it doesn't come off, you know, there's the criticism there that you know, the system doesn't suit the players. Um. How is Francesco coping at the moment, in your opinion? Because some of the newspapers this morning saying that he's already under mounting pressure, what with, with five games, and how much notice you take to, to the press and media. But how is Francesco coping with uh, the pressure on him at the moment? Well, he seems fine. Uh, you know, he's, there's no issues. I know maybe people on the outside like to make 
um, make stories and, and, and things, but in the change room and on the pitch, there's, there's not been no problems, not been no issues. I think nothing's changed. You know, the way the manager works is the same. Uh, it's the same training as we had last season when we was uh, beating Liverpool and West Ham. You know, nothing's changed. He's not. He's not done anything different. Things are as normal. Like I say, I mean, obviously the performance-wise is has not been great. Like you say, the last game against Southampton, especially, but you know, there's still a lot of football to be played, and um, he's just going about his business as usual. You just said there that respecting ever at the football club is important. Does Francesco not command respect as well as previous managers? No, I wouldn't say that. Um, I think the manager's got the respect of all all the players in the squad. I know. You know, we talk about the two uh, substitutions lately with with them issues, but. Like I say, there's not been no. I've not seen anyone disrespect the manager in the training or behind closed doors. I think any manager that comes in, you have to respect the manager. Listen, he's he's had a, a career where he's managing Italy for so long in the top flight. Um, okay, he, he might not be the, the the big world star name as such, but I think as players, you have to respect your manager and and their staff, um, regardless of where they've come from. Um, are you concerned? Considering the games coming up, because there's two games against Man City and Arsenal and Liverpool to come, are you, are you concerned? Are you worried? No, I'm not worried. I think um, listen, the, the performance on Sunday was wasn't good, and that that obviously is a worry. If you if you perform like that in in the next game or the next ten games, then we're, we're not going to pick up any points or very few, like you know. So like I say still early in the season, um, but I mentioned before. We want to try and nip this in the bud, and, and you know we don't want this to fester in terms of the performance level. We want to make sure we, we put it right. But yeah, if it, if it carries on, yeah, you do worry because we see what happened last year. So it's all about being proactive, doing something now, uh, making sure as players we we step up. You know, we can talk about systems, we can talk about a whole host of different things that are involved in a day-to-day -day basis of a football club. But at the end of the day, when you cross that white line as a player, it's down to you as an individual to perform and. You know, we have to we have to say in some of the games this season we haven't done that. Uh, I know you mentioned the qualities of Man City. Um, I know it's early days, but are they are they a good bet for the title even at this early stage? The, the way that they're playing. Well, yeah, I think the way they've started and the squad they've got. You know, the manager who's coming, he seems to have been managing in the Premier League. He's took to it like he's been here for 15 years. You know, he's got them playing some fantastic stuff. It's great to watch. I think you know all of us have. I've waited for the manager to come in where and watched him before in, in, in Bayern and Barcelona and, and wondered if it would be the same here. And so far, it looks like they're, they're playing some great stuff. And oh, I think they'll be right up there. I think uh, they they look like the team to beat. I think that's that's for sure. Yeah, um, on the issue of Guardiola, have you always been a fan of the, the way that he plays when he was at Barca and, and obviously at Bayern Munich as well? Yeah, no, I've been a massive fan. I think obviously we're a team over the years that have. You know, based ourselves on possession football and and pressing. I remember when Brendan was here. We, we obviously we, we looked at Barcelona a lot and the way they done things. So always a a manager and and his beliefs is is similar to Swansea over the years in terms of the possession football and and the, the high pressing. Um, so you know he's a great he's a great manager to watch in terms of the way he sets his teams up. Uh, just finally from me, it's a strange situation to play City twice in you know in a, in a handful of days. Um, fair to say that the Premier League game is obviously the, the more important in terms of, uh, of getting those points but league competitions can help can't they, the momentum and, and, uh, and they can help form can't they well they can, I think the good thing after Sunday is that we've got a game so quick and it's an opportunity for players who maybe if the manager decides to, to change things around it gives the players who maybe haven't been playing in the league the chance to impress and, and, and do well like I say, obviously the cup game uh, is big for us. It, it served us well in in years gone by, and it, like you say, you can breed confidence into the team. We'll be in uh, the Liberty Stadium in, in a fantastic atmosphere. I think as players, we need to make sure we give them something to shout about. I think the last game against Chelsea, the atmosphere in the second half was, was fantastic. So we need to give them something to shout about, and I think if we can do that, obviously Man City coming in great form, but we've got to believe that we can we can beat them, and I'm, I'm sure we can. Cheers, Thank you. Just one other little thing, if you heard that uh, Premier League player was, was pulled out just before kick-off yeah. on Sunderland game, Van Anholt with uh, the advice from the FA that 
nothing untoward, but they just felt precautionally they wanted him not to play in the game because they didn't further look at the test results he got as a regular yeah. audio check. How often do you get them and how does that compare to when you first came to the club, obviously in the lower leagues? And yeah. How important is it to players that you're getting these? Well, it's funny. I mean, I only had, I had one two or three days ago. Yeah, I, I, you know, we all went through it maybe two or three days ago. Someone come to the training ground, they, they check us. I think it's every year now we, we have a check. I think obviously since um, the Moamba incident, I think the Premier League and the FA have really stepped it up to make sure they try and find anything that, if there is any issue there, to try and, I mean, you can't stop everything, but like I say, maybe on sun, on Sunday with Van Aanholt, they, they see something a, a bit different there and just wanted to, just make sure that the players' welfare is the main thing. Um, years ago, if you're talking about League Two and League One, we we wouldn't have had it. I don't know what it's like now in League Two and League One. I'm sure they do the test. I'm sure now with everything that's happened, I think that the healthcare amongst the players is 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 a lot better than maybe years ago. And like I say, they're, they're doing it regularly now every year, and it, it's a good thing because you know they flag something up. Hopefully, it's nothing serious for the player, but it's just to make sure that everything's you know well for him. And if guys are so happy with that, then you know you're clear. You open mind for the season well yeah I mean it's yeah, it's, it's important that you know your, your health because at the end of the day alright we're footballers but you need to make sure that your health is the main thing in your life it's not it's not just uh, about football so it's important that we know that all the players out there are in good health and that everything's well cheers thank you, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> do uh, written in the uh, away address cheers pal no problem